What's up? Welcome to another episode of Get Close. I am Gio. And I'm Bart. And excuse Bart if you're listening to our podcast right now because he's wearing a track suit. So there's going to be a lot of that happening. Yeah. And then also, excuse me if you're watching uh, our podcast, I didn't iron my pants and I'm very well aware of it. How do you iron those? They're so big. What do you mean? Do I feel you know like, how to iron? Do you know how an iron works? Yeah, but I feel like those type of pants. It's not a press. You're not supposed to iron because they're supposed to be big and wavy. Yeah, but there's cr- there's a bunch of creases everywhere. Oh, I didn't even notice until you pointed them out. What do your eyes see? I think it's so interesting what males and females pay attention to. I think girls have dumb vision. All right, motherfucker. Explain before things go sour. Um, I think girls pay attention to all the dumb stuff. <laughs> okay, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, like, you know, like there's all the smart stuff that you should focus on. <laughs> I'm going to fucking wrap you in that bag suit you're wearing. You know what I'm talking about? All the smart stuff you should focus on. Girls don't focus on that. Okay, so what are some smart things guys focus on? Obviously, not the fucking toilet bowl. All the stuff that matters. So what matters? Life. Give me an example, smarty pants. Like when we're vlogging, for example, right? Uh huh. I'm trying to capture the moment. You're like, oh my god, is my, is my does it look good? Oh my god, you, how come you didn't tell me there's a piece of chocolate stuck to the side the whole time? Okay, you know I don't care about that. And I'm like, uh, that's real life, and people like vlogs that are in real life. Not, Why are you talking all kinds of shit right not now? Like make believe. Why are you talking all kinds of shit with your stupid big ass head wearing headphones? You told me to give an example. I wasn't trying to talk shit. That is talking shit because you're 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 putting out lies. Well, don't ask me for examples, and I won't give you the truth. Okay, so that's how this podcast can go down, <laughs> huh? Guys versus girls, shit. No, you brought it there. No, I didn't. All I said, said was, how like, do your, what do your eyes see? Like, it's so interesting how girls and guys see different things. Yeah, and it is like, very and interesting. You know what I said? You know what I said? You're already talking shit. No, you know what I said? I said, I agree. No, you said, and I was like, yeah. And to further prove my point, I'm like, yeah, I agree. And girls look at this and guys look at, look at and that. It's not this and that. You're so like, actually, girls are stupid. Boys are not so stupid. So I technically got your back. No, not technically got my blood because I don't tell me this and show the fucking gums on all my teeth. <laughs> I like how we're like four years old. Uh, fine. I hear me and Taika will fucking argue the same way. Who, you and Taika? Yeah. That's cute me. Yeah, because he's a child and I act like a child. Is that what you want to hear? Does that make you happy? No. Nah. So we do want to talk about today. I don't know. Whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, really, I want to know what you see. So what were you looking at when you didn't look at my pants being all creased? Well, like as any smart person would. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk out <laughs> and you're going to do this by you're yourself. Gonna walk out? <laughs> I'm gonna walk don't out. walk out, baby. What do you walk out for? No, no, don't do that. <laughs> uh, why do you hate me? I love you so much. <laughs> You're looking at what are you looking at? I was looking at your freaking low bar marks on the back on your back. I like how you turned around so you can show me when you're attractive low bar marks. Hey, I train, dude. Those bursted blood vessels next to the armpits. Hey, you only get those when you train hard. True. All right, if you're lollygagging in the fucking gym and going half ass, you're not getting this shit. True. That's true. So you, fuck off. You do train hard. But what I see is those pants are so big and loud. Like tiny wrinkles, I'm not gonna be able to see it. You know, your outfit is so like eccentric. You're not gonna be able to eccentric? notice. Eccentric? Yeah, you're not gonna be able to notice these. What do you things. mean eccentric? Like it's very unique. It's very like pow in What's your face. What's eccentric though? What do you mean? It's eccentric. Yeah. Oh shit. What are you asking? <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know. I thought you were trying to diss me again. I'm just so on guard right no, now. No, it just seems like you keep wanting to prove the point that girls are dumb or something. <gasps> You asked E central like three times. Fine. I think it's because you emphasize the E. It's usually like eccentric. So what you said? Trick. Well, eccentric. But I just you just said E centric. So yeah. I was like, what is going on? I'm just on? talking. I'm just I'm just Italian, you know. I got I got I got lots of lots of feelings. You just say you're Italian? Yeah. I'm got a lot of feelings I gotta get out. So I emphasize certain words. You know All what right. I mean? 
certain fun. words I emphasize. Okay, what other shit do you want to talk to like, me how about? about these nuts, huh? You know, like that. Like, I just, <laughs> like why, why, do you, why do you say nuts? You don't have to say nuts, but he's feeling, what about these nuts? You know what I mean? Yeah, you're saying it the same, but you'd be like, nuts. Hey, some so piece I of wanted pepperoni, this. some say baloney. You're so stupid. I hope you know that. <laughs> I am. Okay, you do know that and you acknowledge it. I know how stupid I am and I'm proud of it. <laughs> That's one thing I actually wanted to talk about today. <laughs> what? How stupid I am? <laughs> oh, you're just so confident as a person. Really? You don't think you're confident? Well, I don't know. I think that's one thing that like um, a lot of people search for, confidence. Why are you sitting like that? You're throwing me off. Well, how am I sitting like? You look like a turtle. Yeah, I'm trying to pay attention. I'm trying to like. You have headphones fucking suffocating your ears. Why do you need to lean your head Isn't that forward? Ironic? Maybe I forgot I had a monster. I was just trying to listen. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking mess. I know. And by you, I think we're a mess. Why are we? I don't know. You were just talking all kinds of shit to me. So now I just feel defeated. Oh, good. So keep going. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. Where do you get this confidence from? Because you shouldn't have it. Really? At all. How come? Why should you have this confidence? You're flawed as fuck. Well, what's so flawed about me? Everything. Literally everything. You name it, I'll, sh I'll tell you the flaw. My flat feet. Yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay. <What? laughs> that's a yeah. flaw. Yeah, I'm confident about them. They're yeah, flat. that's what I want to talk about. Doesn't get flatter than that. <laughs> that's true. You got pancake feet so? for sure. So what? And that's what I want to talk about. Okay, talk. Yeah. How did you learn to love it? Because they're really weird. Well, did you always love your flat feet? No, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> no one athletic has flat feet and I hate them. I wish I was more athletic. This is so frustrating. Why is it so frustrating? <laughs> Because I feel like I'm dealing with a child at this moment. And then I'm getting sucked into the childhood. Yeah. And then now I'm becoming a child. And I'm getting frustrated at myself for, like, getting trapped by your fucking evil ways. <laughs> evil ways? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, really. Do you really hate your, your flat feet? I wish they weren't so flat. Of course. But then you said you love them. What do you mean? I don't know how else to say Well, that. I love them because they're mine. But I hate that they're flat. Right. So what... what mechanism is behind you learning to love them because they're yours well so they're mine and i there's nothing i can do to change it so i can live life hating them like but truly a, hating them a lot of people could find ways to change it and i have too how did you change it what did you change by like lifting weights playing more sports being more athletic but they didn't change they didn't but what i'm able to do with them is I could probably do a lot more with these flat ass feet than a lot of people could do with the perfect arches. True. Very true. And I would agree. Yeah. Um, where does that come from though? Was this something that, you know, you were feeling bad about or people made fun of you and you're like, nah, that ain't it. And I don't I don't mean specifically your feet. Obviously we're talking about your feet, of course, but I it's more of a general statement because you really do live your life on this like um different wavelength. Who, me? I Who the fuck? The bear, dude. This guy right here. I'm talking to him. Excuse me. Can you please stop interrupting? I want to know how this bear over here is so confident with his fucking flat feet. His feet's flat, too. They're pretty flat. Actually, he's got more of an arch than you <laughs> He <dude>. does. <laughs> of course you. What are you talking so about? So what wavelength do I live life at? You, you, I think that was one of the things that attracted me to you so much. Your confidence. You just have this, like, this energy to you where it's like you have this big dick energy. Really? Bro, are you fishing for compliments at this time? I love compliments. <laughs> I give up. Why do I don't want to talk to you Why? anymore. Why? I don't want to talk to you anymore. You you keep going. No, I'm talking to you. Go. Go. You go. <laughs> you you think it's so funny. Let's see what else you got. That's it. I'm done. Awesome. Me too. I'm just listening to whatever you have to say. You're not because I'm asking you questions. Okay, what's the last question you asked? So you're not listening to whatever I have to say. I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> if you knew how badly I want to punch you right now. <laughs> but, but give me a kiss then. No, what? <laughs> Go. What was the question again? This is the worst podcast ever, no, I think by it's the, the way. the funnest one. <laughs> I could picture people sitting in traffic going, this is 
awesome. Yeah, because you guys could we're feel not the my only pain. One, like, we're not the only ones that fight in this world. This is so annoying. Fine. I'm I, really okay. trying to have a productive session me here. Me too. What's, what's the question? Tell what me. What do you mean me too? Me too. We're on the same page. What's your question? I don't answer it. Hold on. My, my heart's about to fucking beat out of my chest. Okay. And not in a good way. Are you good now? No. Okay. I feel it in my throat now. Okay. Then take a deep breath and then go and then swallow it back down. <laughs> okay. So you're a very confident person. You know what your your gifts are. You understand your shortcomings, but you don't let those shortcomings ever define you. That takes a level of confidence, self-awareness, whatever. Where does that come from? Mm. I don't know where it came from. Okay, what's your first memory of having shit like that? I do have my first memory of having a strength. Actually, you know what? I think it was in maybe in second grade. So I think up until second grade, I was, I think most kids are, you're pretty oblivious of your physical attributes, what you're capable of, your athletic ability, right? Everyone's kind of the same. They're just doing stuff. And I remember in second grade is when we started running and we started doing pull-ups for like measuring you know, like, do you remember, like, in elementary school, they have PE where you, get, you see, like, how far you can stretch and there's that ruler thing that you put your feet up to? Yeah. Like, just, like, those standardized, like, physical tests. And I remember I I was running with my class and I was literally, like, either the last one or second to last one. And I tried hard. And I'm like, oh, shit, that must be, like, this asthma thing. I'm just not good at running or I just feel like, man, how come these guys could run so hard? It seems so effortless because like we're, you're running laps, right? And then like the fastest runner would like lap us. I'm like, holy crap, this guy's like on his third lap. I'm only on my second one. And then so I'd be like, oh, man, that's like people are just better than me at that. But then when we did the pull up test, I got the first one in the class. I did five in as a seven year old kid. And then most kids are just like bent arms. You know, they could barely come their way up. And then the athletic specimen um, in our class who looked like he flunked four grades because he was just fucking huge. Like from my obviously he didn't dunk because he was only in second grade. But from my perspective, when we played basketball, this guy might as well have been doing 360 dunks. Yeah, because that's what it felt like. And you're also a shrimp as a kid, right? Yeah. And he was only able to do like four or five. So all of a sudden, I was like, everyone's like, whoa, like Bart did as much as Matt. And I was like, holy crap, that's crazy. And then so I'm just like, why why am I good at pull-ups? That's what I started thinking about, you know. And then I started like, like kind of watching the way that I played on the playground. And I really liked monkey bars. So I just think just all the hanging around and like going around and probably all the time I'm ejaculating on the poles and stuff. It really helped like my pull up game. What do you mean you're ejaculating <laughs> on the fucking poles? What are you talking about? Remember when I told you that also in first grade is when I found out if I climbed a pole to the top that I would bust these like little nuts that I even know about. How old are you? Um, Like six. And then it would just, I, I just knew I love climbing poles. I knew when I got to the top, I was going to feel the sensation in my dick and it felt good. So I'd always climb poles like every recess. And you were busting little baby nuts. Yeah. Okay. And so probably that, a combination of pole climbing and then also monkey bars, it got my uh, pull up game pretty good. And then that was something that made me proud of myself, you know? Yeah. So I think maybe that was probably like my earliest, my earliest memory or thought that I'm you, different that there's you have what you're good at and yeah. what you're not good at and that you're how good those things become on both ends is in your control yeah and i knew that like if i started running damn that's really fucking complex at fucking six seven years old maybe i just studied a lot or i was just naturally observant but I would just see kids that would like go up and like, mm -hmm. oh, like that, right? Were you already practicing Kung Fu at this point? At this point? Uh, yeah, I just started. 
Oh, so yeah, you wouldn't even be able to tie those two things together yet. Yeah, but I would just see kids like, and just give up. And like, oh, I'll never be good at this. Yeah. And then I look at them and I'm like, you're literally sitting on the bench this whole play. Like, of course you're not going to be good at that. You know? Versus there's kids like, you see kids that, um, you know how like in elementary school, like for Halloween, people will come in and they're like football uniform or basketball because they play league. And then those are the same kids in recess smashing on everyone. Yeah. I'm like, oh, they do extra. They do extra things that I don't do or that the school doesn't do. And I'm like, no wonder they're good. Like the kids that come in with like, let's say it's soccer day for PE and they come in with like shin pads. And you're like, I don't have shin pads. And they're the ones that are like bouncing the ball like with one foot. And they're like, I definitely don't know how to do that because I can't even do it with my hands. And then you just start to kind of put those two together. And I think um, that's when I started to learn that you can – uh, increase or decrease what you're good at increase and decrease what you suck at but most importantly the feeling I got from it was so important like the feeling of doing the most pull-ups in class and then going wow this is really cool what what not knowing that that feeling is called confidence what was the feeling uh um what was this wow was it because people were cheering you on or the fact that you did it the the fact that I was the best in the class no one can do what I can do. Mm. That feeling. I was like, I don't know what this feeling is. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, wow, that guy tried his hardest and he couldn't do it. That guy tried his hardest. He couldn't do it. Only that guy, the guy That's who flunked close. four grades, could do <laughs> it, you know? And I'm like, That's crazy. What about prior to that? Like you would say your mom was always so proud of one being Chinese, but she would like instill a lot of like um confident talk in you. I never, uh, it just felt like lecture. Uh, so I never really like it was resonated. Never empowering. Yeah, I never was empowering or resonated. It was more so like, this is what you should be doing and you're not doing it. Yeah, because so she'll, sure she'll tell attention. me like, Chinese is the best, it's the culture, like look, look at these warriors. Then I'm like, why the fuck are they getting their asses kicked by all these Japanese karate guys in? You know, I'm like, if Chinese kung fu is okay. so good, why are they getting their <laughs> asses, asses whipped by all these fucking Japanese karate guys? I'm like, obviously these guys are pussies. And my mom's like, look at Bruce Lee. I'm like, yeah, there's only one. I'm like, there's like 10 Japanese karate guys that'll kick these other 10 kung fu guys' asses. You know? Yeah. So then going back to um, second grade, you feel like tight. Are you like addicted now at that point? Going, yeah. I just understood that I was better. And I just understood that if I kept hanging around, I would maintain it. That's crazy. And I knew if I stopped hanging around, I would lose it. Because you could literally feel it. How? How? How do you know just, that? You could just feel it. Like, like let's say one week I played way more handball and I go try to do pull-ups again. I'm like, oh, man, I only got four. I got five last time. And then I'm like, this week I'm hanging around on the monkey bars again. And then I'm go, and then I'm like, oh, wow, I got five again. That's so interesting how, like, much you paid attention. Yeah, it's doing, like, little experiments. I didn't pay attention to any of that shit. What are you paying attention to? I don't even remember second grade. I don't know. Maybe getting in trouble. Maybe I was a lonely kid without an imagination or something, but like, um, I just wanted to play all the time. I think I was a lonely kid, and that's probably why I did so many experiments. Like the days that I was like in like daycare, like after school, like I would pull out like all like six handballs, and I would hit slices with all of them, and I found out which ones that had the perfect amount of air for the sickest slices. Oh my god! Like that's how much I was experiment and play around and mess mess around, and then so like when we play like handball with people, I'll be like start touching the ball. As soon as I touch the ball, I'm like, oh, you're dead, man. Or if I got a ball that's extra bouncing, I'll have a different game plan for this ball. Like I would just know. I'm like this one. This is the ball I'm gonna make you run because this one bounces like crazy. So I'm gonna hit this way, go that, make you run all the way that way. When you volley it this way, I'm gonna hit it that way, and you're gonna have to run all the way that way. And then once you catch up to my game, I'm gonna start faking and then just. The, you know when they go ah and just go ding. yeah i fucking hated that yeah so I'll be like, you're all the way back there you're like setting up for it and you're like no yeah and like the super flat balls i knew i could hit the slicey where it comes hits the wall and then as soon as it hits the wall it just only rolls so you're done excuse me sir it's called a slider a slider what are slices well little babies say slices they're sliders <laughs> okay sorry because they slide all right fine sliders whatever right. it is i'll it kill sound, you it's... i'll kill you in it yeah, you did, okay? Exactly. Is that what you wanted to hear? But, yeah. But that's when I, that's what I, I like, uh, uh, this is like, you're asking me a question about confidence. You're trying to school me on sliders. 
Yeah, so? Fine. That's what we but yeah, that's when I first found out you can like kind of control the things that you want, you know? And then I think growing up, I started to realize that more and more. And then I think just knowing that you can't change, like obviously I want to be taller. Like anyone that likes sports wants to be taller because you're just more athletic, right? Um, you want to be taller, you want to jump higher, but you just aren't given those things. So you, you, the best thing is to do is like try to master the things you can control and how can you improve the things that you can control. And I think by doing that, you get this feeling called confidence. That's probably what you sense. Yeah. Cause like, um, I mean, the fact that you were able to see your shortcomings and find ways if they can change to change and improve it. And if not, then going, all right, well, how can I use what I got for my advantage? Whereas most people would be like, oh, man, that sucks. The end. <laughs> I, I think everyone has a magical power. Um, I just think it's up to the person to discover it. And if you don't try a lot of things in your life, then you're doing a disservice to yourself because you'll never find it because you've never looked. Um, what what are some magical powers to you that you think people possess? Rhythm, music, creativity, writing, literally all the channels of the world, right? Every every occupation that the world needs, or even any Guinness World Book of Records, like how does a person know they can walk on a string the longest? They That's tried it. True. You know, right. they literally tried it. Right. They attached a rope from one tree to a tree and then they walked and go, oh, I could do that. I could do that with the balance beam. Can I do it without a pole? Yeah. Can I go from this cliff to that cliff? You know, everything people tried. Like even like Houdini, like, can I survive in a barrel off of Niagara Falls? It's just people exploring and just trying shit. Yeah. And I think most people don't try things, so they never know what their magical power is. That's so true. That really is true. Mm. Big kidney. No, that's true. Um. And then I think the confidence comes. So I think the first step is you have to try a lot. From trying a lot, you find out what you're good at and what you suck at. And then the second layer is the things that you're good at, you do a little bit more of those. And when you get a little bit better, you're like, I'm really good at these things. And then you try even more things to see if there's more things you're good at. Because it's just a numbers game. The more things you try, you're going to find out you're better at more things. You know, like, oh, wait, actually, I'm not just good at Connect 4. I'm really good at the Rubik's Cube. Oh, I'm not just good at Rubik's Cube. I'm actually really good at yo-yos or whatever. You know, yeah. and, you just, and you just start adding, adding more things. And then the things that you don't do good at, you just kind of throw them away. And then now you kind of have, like, a bag full of skills and yeah, I think you end up being pretty confident because you're like, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty good at a couple, like quite a few things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty good at quite a few things and I don't know if I possess the same confidence that you do, you know, cause there's a lot of things where you're like, you're really fucking good at that. And I'm always going like, uh, you're just saying that, you know what I mean? So I don't know if that's, if that's also, are you, case. did you earn what you're good at? Cause that's the main thing. You have to earn it. I think so. Like, like, like saying, um, well, maybe not then. Or maybe I don't feel like I have. Like what? Maybe I have and maybe I don't feel like I have. So like just being artistic, right? I think that just comes to me naturally. So I don't think I really appreciate it. I think I've, um, like growing up, I was able to pick things up fairly quickly. And I think that in itself wasn't very stimulating. So then I would just drop it. Well, you probably never competed in it. Have yeah. you entered into a competition? No. See? So I don't think you really earned it. Unless it was dance, then yeah, you earn your positions. Yeah. So and I they think, did. So did you do a competition though? No. See, I think that's that stuff's really important because when you earn it. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, wait, I'm actually better than people at this. Yeah. And you see the effort that other people put in. You, you're like... Okay, like it's it's a confidence that's not like, you know, like some people they're like, I can do the splats, uh, <laughs> and then they're like, but they're not, it, they're not, they don't have any confidence because they're just born like that, you know. Yeah. Versus the Splitting. guy, 
Yeah, versus the guy that's like practicing the splits all the time. And then so even though they can do the same thing, that other guy is extremely confident with it because it took them four years to get there. True. You know? Yeah, and they probably know it way better than you. Yeah. Kind of like you where you were like, oh, I started picking up on these patterns and I realized that you can lose it as much as you can, you know, have it grow. Yeah, so he's really confident in it. Damn. So the confidence, it's it needs to be work done by you for you to earn your confidence. No yeah. one can give you confidence but yourself by 100%. yourself earning it. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um and I do have I do have confidence, but I feel like I don't um have your level of confidence. And I want your level of fucking confidence. What's what's my level of confidence? You don't give a fuck about anybody. <laughs> <laughs> is that confidence or I is that, so, or is that being a psychopath no because you don't give a fuck about what anyone has to say maybe other than me i think i can fucking destroy you if i wanted to probably yeah but other than what that what are some things that i don't care about what other people have to say the way you look <laughs> <laughs> what, I look? <laughs> what about the way i look what do i look like <laughs> just kidding oh I'm trying to get you back for the beginning of this goddamn segment, dude. Man, I thought you forgot about it. <laughs> Never. I'm petty as fuck. That's definitely a sign of low confidence. Absolutely. <laughs> no, but it, it really doesn't seem like you're bothered by much. Or I guess maybe what you give a fuck about is um, not as trivial. Because I think you would give a fuck about if someone called you dumb. Nah. You don't think you're dumb? I, don't, I wouldn't care if they called me that. But I think you would care if you thought you were dumb. Yeah, so that's what I mean. You do give a fuck about a lot of things. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm saying so. I think when I ask that question too, it's, um, it's pretty trivial things that of course you shouldn't give a fuck about, but you do give a fuck about a lot of. Sounds things. like it could be a con uh, a balance of confidence and also ego. Because um, like the things that I'm confident at and the things that I care about. I think I try to base them on things that matter. So if someone called me dumb, I'm like, I can provide for my family and have a really good time with my family. That doesn't bother me at all. You know? So even like a lot of the stuff that I see like on the, you know, Instagram feed or news and then they're like, can you believe that comedian like called Asians this? What do you think? I'm so fucking enraged. I'm like, that to me is actually a clearer sign of that comedian's ignorance. One, his ignorance. Two, um, his inability to tell a good joke, but produces no feelings here because it's my family and my family life is good. Yeah. And what he's saying does not resonate with me. Yeah. You know? So I think it's probably a combination of those two. Yeah. Damn, that's really good. Yeah, as I hear you talking about all this stuff, um, it really puts back in front of my face how badly I want to train in jujitsu. Really? Yeah. Why? Because I think jujitsu um, is going to put together all the stuff that one, I naturally already possessed, right? Like being creative, um, being athletic. Like I didn't really have to earn it because, you know, I was just gifted, you know, the ability to have the height have you know be athletic uh be creative like this is these are just genes that were passed down to me right mm -hmm. um so like now having to put that to the test in jujitsu which is one of the things that you call the deep water sports where like you're getting suffocated and there's split decisions that need to be made and you have to earn every single move because any anytime you move there's a counter move to that and like you're getting challenged um, you're getting frustrated because it's like, fuck, you know, like you're going to be good at you're going to be able to beat certain people, but then other people are going to be right at your level. And that's the one that's going to challenge you the most. And there's going to be people that are way better than you. And that's you're going to try to catch up to them. But I think like getting put in that position, I think, is um, is going to be so confidence boosting to me. And the fact that I'll be able to fucking grapple, you know, like I think it's it's going to it's going to elevate a lot of um my confidence i think so i think you know like a lot of fighters they don't really get hurt by words like true words i'm not talking about press conference where like they're selling the fight so they're talking shit 
or whatever, you know, where like it seems like they're getting riled each other up. A lot of that is just it's they want to sell seats. Yes, it's seats, it's theater, right? It's marketing. Yeah, it's entertainment. But like a lot of the fighters, like, um, like when, in real life, in real life, they can care less because they're like, at, okay, they're like, this is scene one. At the end of this movie, if I wanted to, I'm whooping your ass. I can take your life. So in the beginning, if you're just gonna talk a bunch of shit, I don't really care, right? Yeah. Versus when you see, um. Like all the, like the Karen type videos or like the Chad type videos that you see, we got a guy that's all puffed up, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he's getting affected by words. It's usually the guys that have never been in a fight before. Yeah. So they don't have confidence, and it's 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 actually an overconfident display. You know, they're trying to peacock to to, to hope that you don't because, fucking. Yeah, and they don't even. They probably don't even know that. They probably really think they're badass, and um. But it's their lack of experience that's blinding them because they've never been tested. And then so the people that have been tested that have been through thousands of like matches and roles and stuff just through their 10 years of training, they know how it's going to go down. So they're just like, oh, it's fine. This guy, he's just drunk. He's tripping. I'm going to leave him alone. You know? Yeah. Versus the other guy's like, what would you say about my wife? What would you say? It's because he hasn't rolled the dice that many times. So each time he rolls the dice matters so much. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. I know. Usually if someone doesn't uh, get rolled up like that, it's like, oh, shit. What are they capable of? And I like that. I like that when I go to Taika's school because um, when his class is ending, the bigger kids are coming in. And then after the big kids, then it's the adult class. So then we oh, get to see. Oh, jiu school. What did I say? Taika's school. Oh, jujitsu. Yeah, school. so I was just Sorry. I was picturing, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, the big kids do come in. Yeah, you're right. And adults come in. I'm like, wait, that school takes adults too? <laughs> Sorry, his jujitsu school. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and then you see these people walking in and they're they're so like unassuming. Yeah. Like it looks like this guy, the, one of the guys that walked in, it just looked like he he's like like I don't know, he works I don't know, like he just probably builds Legos all day or something. Like he just doesn't look physically threatening. Yeah. You know? He just looks like he has soft hands. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, soft hands. A lot of them, a lot of them, you look at them and then you're like, man, I would have said I'll whoop all of your asses except I've been in this class and I get my ass whooped by all of them. In seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So there is this level of respect too that's, that's like earned and obviously like given. Yeah. Um, That you're like, oh shit. Like I, I see them walk in and I'm like, that's tight. Like I'm not. I'm not thinking anything. What I've noticed, uh, the two biggest confidence boosters is fitness and combat sports. You mean fitness? How so fitness? So like, I think fitness, what I love about fitness is that it starts with one of the purest forms of troubleshooting. You know, where you look at yourself in the mirror, a, a deep, honest look which already majority of people never have a deep, honest look with themselves in the mirror, right? But a deep, honest look in the mirror objectively in going, what don't I like about my body? Oh, my, maybe my shoulders look small or like, um, oh man, I'm kind of like lots of flab in this area. So you take your, your like issues that you have and you create a program that strategizes on taking care of those issues and then you fix them and you repeat that over and over so you're exercising this muscle of constantly assessing honest planning ass honest reflection planning <clears throat> strategizing completing so you really build this confidence that not only is internal external because you can see it you know someone that's been lifting for five years you just look at them and you're like oh this guy has tons of muscle on his upper back like that doesn't come from About sitting one around. month yeah or even just doing so it. there's that part of it so that person has the must that like has trained constantly and fixing problems like that's like bodybuilding the biggest thing that their people are good at are training how to fix problems and strategizing then the combat sports element i think when when your worst case scenario is not that bad you're like what else is going to be crazy? You know? Yeah. yeah. Like all, obviously all of our worst case scenarios, worst, worst, worst case scenario is family members dying or whatever. Nothing we can control about that. Second worst case scenario is getting our asses beat, killed, 
whatever, you know, our survivability. And if someone is like, if 900 assailants came to me, pretty much all of them are going to end up in a hospital. They just walk around. They're they're now the apex predator of this world. So yeah. the way a lion walks around is way different than like a gazelle. You know, the gazelle's like, or a rat. oh, shit. Yeah. You know, but the lion is just like, the lion can walk up straight up to an alligator and go, what's up? The lion looks at us and we're supposed to be the apex. They yeah. look at us and they're like, ooh, I'm going to eat your ass up. Yeah. So I think that, I think those two are super, um, are, are super confidence builders. Yeah. So maybe that's what I'm missing. That's why I feel like more and more I'm like, God, I can't wait to yeah. free up my schedule so that I can uh, devote more time. I've been to telling it. you for like 15 years you should do jujitsu. Yeah, but it needed to come from me. Yeah, that's true. It can't really like even with fitness, it has to come from the person. Yeah, it does. Because if they don't want it, if they don't want to do it, then it's not going to get done. Or if yeah. they don't have the right reasons to do it, it's not going to get done. Yeah. And I've always told myself I've had this like limiting belief if you will that like i don't that you know uh i don't like contact sports and um what was the other one uh you're uh, claustrophobic yeah i'm claustrophobic but i think we're all slightly claustrophobic but i think these are just really convenient it convenient excuses for me to like not grow from those things the stuff you don't like you got to do the most i know dude the hands down that's the reason why i signed up to do jump school and that's actually a fucking confidence booster in it in and of itself yeah because you get comfortable with what's uncomfortable yeah what did you say you that's why you that's why when i when i joined my unit in the marine corps and i found out that it's an airborne unit i was one of the first people to uh sign up for jump school why i'm scared of heights i'm like well fucking i might as well learn how to jump out of airplane i'm gonna be so such a little bitch about it and I took, uh, they have this thing called Airborne PFD, which is before they send you off, you have to qualify. And I took that thing like two or three times. I passed every single time to make sure. Because uh, the jump school is actually an army school. And, you know, like the egos that Marines have, they're like, they're fucking pussies. So I'm never, every Marine we ever send to army school, they're going to fucking crush it. So whatever their army requirements, requirements are, like- we do double. We do double in boots and utes, which is like. Boots, boots and what? Utes, like in utilities. When when they run theirs in regular shoes and like running shorts, we're like our, my unit. It's like nah, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it in boots and shoes, which is even heavier. You're running in boots and pants, pretty much. Boots and pants, boots and pants, <laughs> boots, and pants, and boots, and boots and pants, boots and pants. Yeah, that's pretty fucking badass. But I like I like that stuff because then, um, or else you're always gonna let that thing own you. You know. I know, and I hate it. Like I hate being owned by stuff. Same, dude. Yeah. Same. I hate it. And that's why I also think we're going to love scuba diving. You're going to fucking love it. Mm. <laughs> One step at a time, buddy. I like scuba One diving step too. At a time. Cause the, so I'm, I'm a really good swimmer, right? So that part is not the confidence part. The part, I mean, that's not the part that like gets to me. The part about scuba that gets to me is the breathing part. Because as you know, I have asthma my whole life. And, and like, even when we do like our little hot tub, like breath holding test, you always smash me. Oh, I fucking murder. You murder me. So I know I'm not good with holding my breath and I'm not good with breath management whatsoever. So I like being in that environment where like when your heart rate is up and you're like 50 feet under, you got to like calm yourself down. And just breathing through pretty much a straw, you know, like. You're just getting comfortable there. And even though I know I'll never be like the next guy where if you take my respirator out, this guy could survive for like two minutes. I could probably only survive for 50 seconds. The fact that I'm exercising within that 50 second time frame, I'm becoming a better strategizer for what my weaknesses are. Yeah. So someone that can hold their breath for two minutes, their evacuation strategy is based off two minutes, right? Like if my shit breaks, I got to do this. For mine, I'm always going to stay within the 50 seconds. And then so that might actually make my evacuation strategy more efficient than his. Yeah. Based off my weakness. So some people might view weaknesses as something to hold you back. But in this case, I, I am able to make my weakness something that pushes me forward. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to adopt that more and more for sure. I've always, not always, but I think I've operated that way for a long time without really recognizing that I was trying to push my weaknesses out. Yeah, I think you embrace them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's when you feel the most accomplished, too. Because you're just like, fuck, I did that. 
like me of yesterday was completely afraid of it. It's like overcoming a huge mountain. Yeah. It's like climbing to the top. You might yeah. not be the best, but the fact that you're climbing, you're just like, oh, fuck, I'm not the same person anymore. Yeah. It and, is pretty rad. And also, I think strength and weaknesses are almost a bad way of looking at things because it emo it adds an emotional attachment to it rather than just looking for things, looking at things for how they are, you know, like a, just more of a almost like a physics. Point how would of view. you look at something? How would your mind process uh a perceived weakness, right? Well, I would have to call it weakness because I don't know what else to call yeah, it. Yeah, it's called weakness. Um, and not have an emotion to it. So, for example, when it comes to boxing, right, the go-to, the mo most obvious is, oh, that person has long arms. They're going to jab your ass away because they can hit you before you hit them, right? So anyone with short arms, you're like, man, I'm at a disadvantage. Yeah. Right? So that's the emotion. So that's the weakness. You would say short arms is a weakness, long arms is a strength. Yeah. Right? Um, but when I was training with my coach PJ, shout outs to PJ, I have short arms, but we don't see it like that. You just see it as attributes. What are physical attributes? I have short arms. What would be a good style? Mike Tyson's peekaboo style. So that way I'm always moving, bobbing and weaving, and I'm making the guy with the long arms miss all the time. So it's a strength for the person with the long arm because he can hit you from afar. But his weakness is once he releases that punch, it takes just as long time to get here. Mm. So if a regular guy with a short arm, let's say, theoretically speaking, takes a, a second to hit you, the guy with the long arm is going to take two seconds to hit you and two seconds back. In that two seconds, me with a, a peekaboo style, I could be all up in you and I could hit you in the ribs, whatever, stomach four times and pop out as we've seen Mike Tyson do with yeah. people with much longer arms, right? Yeah. So instead of viewing things as what's a strength, what's a weakness, just view it as attributes. Yeah. Short arms, you need to fight inside. Long arms, you fight outside. Yeah. You know? And then so like, and there's that applied to all other circumstances. You yeah. Know? Very true. Um, as I have mentioned in a few podcasts uh, before this one is uh, how I've just been reading a ton. Yeah. And one of the things that one of the books that I was reading was saying how like nothing in life is ever as bad as we perceive it to be. And it's also never as good as we perceive it to be. That's true. So it's kind of going along the lines of, of, of what you're saying where you shouldn't view things as strengths or weaknesses. You should just view them as attributes. I think the same applies uh, with with saying like, Nothing's ever that bad, but it's also never that good. It's just, it just is. Because at the end of the day, we're ants on a ball spinning through space. I know, but you can't say it like that either. Like all of these absolute statements sometimes get me a little bit frustrated because I'm like, yeah, obviously, no shit, right? And but, I know it's, I know it's, it's made to, to change your perception of yeah, things. Yeah, it's a bucket of cold water. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely, right? But like you have to find the balance between the two. You know what I mean? Because then they also tell you like, oh, you have to be very, very present in this moment and not. But then it's like, but you also have to think about all this other shit. Yeah. It's like. That's why you, people just need to say the things that matter at that moment. Yeah. You know, so when I get too stuck in stuff, then I go, oh, yeah, I'm just an ant on a ball flying through space. Chill out. You know? Yeah. Because the same thing, like I think any proverb has its forwards and backwards, has its right or wrong. Everything just depends on like the use case. It's kind of like that tracksuit you're wearing right now. Yeah. Where there's like a light and a dark side to everything. Every single thing. And that's why these things are so dope. That is so dope. That's the fucking Ascent Collection. I like <laughs> yeah. it. Barbellbrigade.com. I'm going to plug my own shit. Yeah. Let's Ascent go. Collection. Um, yeah. No. I, 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 uh, just, that's just some shit we all got to get over. Um, cause like as you're talking about your scuba experience, right. And you're like, you're going to love it. I'm already doing all the, Oh God, that's so fucking scary. I already can't breathe. I already feel the cold ass water. I already imagine all of these fucking creatures that I can't see because the fucking depths of the ocean just eats up any light source. And I'm going, Oh my God. So I'm like perceiving and looking at all these negative things about it. And then, and then my other side, my logical side goes, yeah, you stupid fucking bitch. If somebody just threw you in the water, yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. But there's steps to this. You're not just going to end up not. It's it's not one day you don't know anything. And then the next day they're going to just throw you in the fucking ocean. It's a very baby steps, yeah. gradual process. You're probably going to start in a pool where you can stand. They're probably just going to teach. Now, even before you go into the pool, they're probably just going to talk to you about fucking 
I don't know how the how the tank works. And you haven't even touched water yet. Yeah, you spend, uh, I think, I think <sighs> you spend like the first two days, the first four hours of the two days is in a classroom. Yeah. Just learning about stuff. Then you understand the theory. And yeah. the second day of the classroom is in a pool, like you said, where it's only like four feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I got to control my emotions better because um, I let those run rampant sometimes. And then I can like... <coughs> I can easily talk myself out of things. I've been trying to control my emotions since I was a kid. You know that? I don't know that. Like uh, the first time I forgot where I was at, I was on top of a building. And I remember I felt that vertical feeling like when you're scared of heights. That what feeling? Vertical. Okay. And I was like, oh, man, it's so scary. What the fuck? And then I would see some of my friends be able to just walk up to the edge of it. You know, I'm like, what the hell? How come they don't feel what I feel? It's so scary. What the fuck? And then later when you come back down, I'm playing with my friends on a curb. And I'm like, oh, I could walk up to the edge of the curb, no problem. And I'm like, oh, man, this is all perception. Because if I could treat that building like a curb, which it physically is literally exactly the same thing. It's not like gravity is stronger up there or lighter up there. It's just me on a curb. Then I would be able to dance around the edge of the building like my friends did. But um, it's just up to my perception. Yeah. So that's when I just realized I need to train on this curb feel really comfortable, increase the curb, increase the curb, increase the curb. And then uh, through that, when my friends, uh, when we got a little bit older, when we're, when we're 10, and they're able to jump on like, you know, like those six foot walls that separate the houses, then they would be able to walk on those. I was able to walk on those now. CUNY. Which I, like, which I through my own practice, has able to overcome at least six feet of heights. Dude, I think you're just a fucking smart person. Really? Why? I don't know. A lot of people don't operate like that. Like, I consider myself a smart person. I might not be textbook smart. Yeah. But I think I'm pretty smart. Um, like, the way I'm able to perceive things and the way I'm able to problem solve and the way I'm able to, like, um, say as something I don't like about myself, I'm able to, like, really dial that in and try to work on that yeah. and changing it. Yeah. Um, you are, like, levels ahead of me when it comes to that. Cause you're you're like perceiving these things at such a young age, where yeah I was young when I was also noticing these patterns and these these attributes and just um, shortcomings or whatever for myself or others, but like or maybe I just don't remember that far back. But I I think I was an adolescent when that started happening. Are you really good in Spanish? Like speaking Spanish? No, I'm not. Like how old of a person you think you have a mastery of Spanish? Like a five-year-old? Probably. Uh, probably. No, maybe like... Two? No, 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 not that bad. Oh. Maybe five. I'll probably say five. Because I was thinking maybe like my ability to, to draw parallels came from being bilingual, but then you're also bilingual. Because, you know, like when you have to like flip one concept into the other and constantly do that, maybe that has exercised the muscle that has always helped me like figure out parallels and patterns all the time. I don't know. You know what I mean? Because I'm really good at like. But my um, Mandarin also is an extremely good. It's probably like a seven or eight year old. Um, But maybe growing up having to translate for my mom all the time. I don't know. Because then I'm really good at like reading body language and being able to like know what the hell's going on. Yeah, you could feel people real good. Yeah, you know, and I'm not able to draw parallels like that. Yeah, you're just probably really smart. Maybe, I don't know. You're just really smart. Maybe. Yeah. You really need to write a book and shit and like, I don't know, film some movies and like put your shit out there. It can't die with you. That's cute. We got to instill all this shit into Taika because you're really wise. Really? Yeah. For your age, you're really wise. I've still, always thought you were pretty wise. I still wise. got that children's book I've been working on. Oh, you still, you're still. I still want to work on it. Yeah. As soon as I have free time, I want to work on it. Yeah. It's about the monkey and the cheese. I know. I know what it's called. I'm not going to forget what it's called. Yeah. 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 I feel like I got to challenge myself with a lot more shit. Right now, I'm challenging myself in a lot of our business endeavors. Yeah. Um, Because this is really the first time that... For the first time in my life, the first few years that I've just been a full-blown business owner, 
Whereas before, I was like a part-time business owner, but I was also like an employee. Yeah. Uh, not an employee because I wasn't technically an employee, but I worked under bosses, a.k.a. you and Joe. Yeah. Um, where it was like the safe space where I can explore and do a lot of things, but not on my dime. You know, like it wasn't on my shoulders. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'll take ownership, but like at the end of the day, it, it's not really going to affect me in any sort of way. Yeah. Whereas now, 100%, like every decision that I make, it doesn't matter who I'm bouncing it off of, it's still on my shoulders, 100%, you yeah. know? Um, so really pushing myself in that regard has been very rewarding and very difficult and very challenging. Um, and, and I'll continue to do that, but I think when I can have a little bit more of me time is when I really do want to focus on a lot more of, of the things that will mentally and like physically challenge me, AKA jujitsu. The stuff that suck teaches you the most about yourself. I know even the people that suck the most. And I think the people, you feel. and I think the people that actually are the most successful, that's actually what, um, is the key to their success. Is that every time they've hit a mistake or a failure or a downfall, instead of being emotionally defeated, because like we said, we attach emotions to things, right? Technically, it's not a failure or a defeat. It's just yeah, it's it not. happened or it didn't happen. Right. And so they take the emotion out of it and then go, okay, so why didn't it happen? So they're able to zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Oh, here's the three problem areas. Right. Fix it. Let's try it again. And it's a very emotionless and like almost like laboratory experiment on yourself and then you end up getting better and better and better and better and then they become successful yeah and so they've exercised this muscle every time something sucks they actually welcome it what i've noticed it's like oh yeah oh cool there's a oh my employees are dating each other and now there's a conflict of interest and then they're like oh that's cool that's a hr scenario i've never had before this is pretty cool i'm glad that's here because now i'll know what to do for next time versus i think a newer business owner or how i would react to be like what the fuck is going on this is a fucking hr nightmare oh jesus <laughs> you know yeah, yeah yeah versus i think the people that are seasoned they they, they welcome it they're like yeah like show me like, like poke holes and everything because then once you poke these holes i know where this boat is weak and it's sealed up and then it'll be ready to go versus most people or even including myself like don't poke holes because i don't know how i'm gonna float for <laughs> i know because it's comfortable and we yeah. don't like to feel uncomfortable yeah, it feels you know comfy right now don't poke nothing i know i know but that's when we all grow the most when shit's uncomfortable yeah one thing i was listening to uh, bj penn and what i liked about what he said is he says when it comes to training he said it's really hard to have an ego and the ego will be the death of you. Because he goes, for example, imagine you come into fight camp and you don't know shit about blocking or checking leg kicks, right? You're like, no, no, I'm good. I, I, I got to train. I don't got to train that. Cool. Uh, come here, dude. Spar. Leg kicks only. You're going to get lit the fuck up. You know, so your legs get fucking tore up. So like when it comes to training and fighting, it's like when when they go in, they, they can't wait to be extremely humble and go, you know what? I don't know how to block a rear naked choke. <laughs> I don't know how to check leg kicks. Please help me. Because you know you're going to spar in the next round. Yeah. And as soon as you spar in the next round and real life happens, all those things that you had an ego and pretend assumption that you know how to do, it's it gets uh, capitalized on. You yeah. know? So I'm like, oh, that's really cool Like to have that type of mentality. And then because uh, BJ Penn was talking about how um, – why he thinks he'll be a good governor because he's running for governor of Hawaii. And he mm -hmm. goes, because it's that same type of mindset that he's applying. He's like, I, when people ask me what's the difference that like the, uh, how I'm going to be a good governor, he was like, it's the same that I'm applied to fighting. I don't know. Sh I don't know shit. So that's why I have a strength and conditioning coach. I have a guy that helps me with my striking, with my grappling. He goes, when it comes to politics, he's bored. Yeah, I don't know shit. So I'm not going to pretend like I know, but I do know what the problems are and I'll find the right people to help me solve those problems. And I'm yeah. like, damn, that's a dope perspective to have. Yeah, it is. Because most people really put on this thing like, oh, I know everything or like, you know, and and because you want to you protect your ego and you want to shield from all your shortcomings. But then if you shield them, you never really get better. Well, and you're kind of um, taught that growing up, right? Like you have control over everything because that's, that's a... That could be perceived as um like not not being in control right like you don't know that what do you mean how are you gonna how's anyone gonna trust you as a leader well they also teach the there's no such thing as a bad question though 
it depends on who you had as who told you that because some people are like yeah there are such things as stupid questions because someone was like there's no such thing as stupid question and then there's people that are like yeah there's a fucking ton of stupid questions i always got sent to the principal's office after i asked my questions yeah because they're pretty stupid but they're pretty funny yeah um i was reading something about like teacher student conversation and this is like an elementary school kid and um he was really sad because he didn't feel like he was brave and then he was asking the teacher like how are you so brave you do so many things that like um i'm scared to do that's kidding yeah and then the teacher's like well i'm also scared but when i'm scared i just have to I just have to do the thing that I'm scared of. And that helps me be a little bit more brave. And then you, and he just kept saying that, like, and then, and then next time that thing happens, I'm uh, to you, I, I, I come off as brave, but it was because I already did it, you know? And then he was just telling the student, like, anytime you're scared to do something, that's the moment that you should do it. And then that's how you become braver and braver and braver and braver. And the kid was like, whoa, and then, like really clicked. That's literally how I got in trouble in school. <laughs> what by practicing what that teacher taught what doing shit that you're scared of yeah what do you mean so like the teacher will be teaching about like biology or science or something right yeah and then so the teacher will go does anyone have any questions and i'm really scared of saying teacher how come you don't shave your neck that is horrible how come you don't shave the back of your neck and then so i'm like you know what i'm gonna follow my urge and, and i'm gonna do what i'm scared of Yes, Mr. Kwan. I'm like, uh, Mr. Teacher, I believe his name was Mr. Okamura. I'm like, how come you don't shave the back of your neck? Are you Boom. serious? Principal's office right away. But I did build confidence. So later on, I was able to ask crazier and crazier questions. What was the craziest question you've ever asked? I don't remember, but there's just, they're full of them to the point where I think teachers see my name on the, the roll call and they're like, oh, the fucking nightmares here. What did that feel like? That's knowing- pretty funny though, huh? It's fucking funny. <laughs> as a student, I would enjoy it. Yeah. You know, as a as a as a B and below grade student, yeah. I would enjoy it. The as a grades a, are like, this guy is ruining my education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and if you were my friend, I would love it because it's funny. But all you're doing is just distracting the I whole know. class. I know, but I was scared of it and I faced my fears, so that's really good. Yeah, good for you, dude. <laughs> good I feel for like you. as a as a student, I was probably like a Michael Scott. You know, I'm like taking those <laughs> proverbs. And it's supposed to mean I don't one think thing, so at but all. But I was always doing that other thing. No, I don't think you were Michael Scott. I think you've just always been a comedian. And I'm pretty sure a bunch of these teachers really liked you. But they fucking... So they liked you as a kid that wasn't in their class disturbing everything they're trying to do. Oh. Uh, I'm pretty sure they like you. And they're like, man, this kid's going places or he's really funny or like, yay, I'm glad he's here. But then now having to put you in the setting that you had to be in, which is an obedient, quiet member of fucking this this classroom society you're a fucking nightmare yeah you know but maybe outside of that they were like oh dude bart's actually really cool or they probably fucking hated your <laughs> stupid they just, ass i didn't say it in my stupid ass <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of teachers though because so now it's very funny right because like teachers are just humans they're just people yeah that are given this title but as a kid you think at least i did um that teachers are just far superior humans yeah I always thought they were just so superior. So then anytime I would see a teacher go out of line and get like scream or get angry or like I've seen a teacher pull a kid's hair one time, um, I'd be like, whoa, they're kind of like I didn't understand how fucking bad that was. I think I saw that early on because I was a kid that made the teachers go out of line. And what did you see? I would just see the teachers. like. Or what did you understand? I should say. Because I think originally I saw teachers as, as like, oh, wow, they're like these like perfect humans. And like, because even that's the oh, way. Oh, when they would like fucking loosen up their tie, you're like, oh, they're humans. Because <laughs> even that's the way that like uh, the Chinese culture reveres teachers, you know, like even on the street, you see them at the supermarket. Oh, lao si. Like, lao si hao. You know, it's always like almost like calling like professor. Like once they earn the title of a teacher, it's a very revered occupation. And that's how I grew up. Um, almost like, oh, hey, hey, uh, hey, doctor. Like Dr. Kwan, like it was nice to meet you. You know, it has that like that um prestige. That, yeah. And but then um because I was a troublemaker, I would always see hella teachers get emotional and out of line and scream and do whatever with me. <laughs> so I was like, Oh man, you guys are not you guys are You're just not human. who you say you, you are. Just, you guys are just human beings. But now that I'm older and I'm like the teacher's age, 
I'm like, man, teachers go through a lot. You know, they're regular people. They got marriages. They could have had a fight at home or yeah. they could have had something go. Their car wouldn't start for 30 yeah. minutes in the morning and now yeah. they're rushing. And then now they got to put up this perfect front in front of class. It's tough. It is tough. Yeah. And then here comes fucking big headed Quan. You got big headed Quan coming here fucking causing a ruckus. God damn it. Well, if anything, if they were positive and adopted uh, your level of mindset of like, hey, there's no bad or good and anything that is perceived as bad is a lesson. If they adopted that and they had that mindset, then they would see you as like a learning lesson that you you showed them a chink in their armor. Maybe. One of my favorite teachers of all time. Oh, and, no. I, and I think this is why I probably even started scuba diving. His name is Mr. Tarpley. Shout outs to <laughs> where are you looking? Are you shout looking? outs to Mr. <laughs> Tarpley. Um, if you're still alive, but, uh, who's my medical middle school assistant principal. And there's so many times where I got sent to the office, got suspended and I was supposed to get expelled, but he always fought with me or uh, for you fought for me oh. against the principal. Shout outs to, uh, Mr. Green. I hate your ass. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he always fought for me. And, um, so like I would get sent to the principal's office and like, let's say I'm there all day until my mom needs to pick me up. He'll always go, why are you come to my classroom? I mean, you can come to my office. So like... Why, what is Mr. Green doing? Just giving you the fucking evil eye? Yeah. He would just be like, <laughs> you're not going to be here for long. Like wow, give, how rude. Like almost like a like a, like a a 90s villain, you know? <laughs> I was like, this one's probably going to be the one. Like that. What a like, loser. Sayonara. Like that, like that kind of what shit. What a loser. Yeah. And then Mr. Tarpley would bring, would bring me in. Like he would just be like, hey, just sit here until your mom comes. So because then like, you know, some teachers would come and give me dirty looks or they didn't want me sitting on the reception and all Ugh, that. Like, people you know, are always going to be immature. Yeah. And all the other kids would come and be like, oh, man, Bart's at the office again. So he would just put me in. And what I love about his office, he had all these photos of him and his son scuba diving. Oh, and I think cool. that's how I always thought scuba diving a was, was a thing. positive, cool thing because they would go visit shipwrecks and, and all that stuff. Like they would uh, take pictures and you would just see like the, him and his son like floating in the middle of the ocean. It was so cool. And then Mr. Tarpley was uh, left handed. So he was one of those guys that's like literally smearing what he was writing. <laughs> And like every time he's just signing papers, I was still just laugh. I just couldn't, <laughs> even though I love them. So, trash, <laughs> even dude. though I love them, I'm like, I'm always like, Mr. Tarpley, like, have you ever thought about like writing with your hand like above the paper? <laughs> that way you like, <laughs> he goes, no, 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 I'm good. And I'm like, all right. And then as he's writing, he's just literally like, smearing it. And then, and then now when he's talking to my mom, I just see like all like this black, black ink. Like, <laughs> poor guy, man. <laughs> He would have excelled in like, like I don't know, writing in Japanese or yeah, like was, Chinese. Yeah, he was just like writing all curve handed like this and he would just smear. <laughs> My sister's left handed, so I know all the woes of a yeah. left handed person. It was just so funny. Yeah. All right, you big cutie pie who talked shit in the beginning. I was able to fucking control my emotions and not want to punch you in the face anymore at the end of this podcast. I'm helping you grow. <sighs> Thank you. Are there any... Uh, last words for you? No. <laughs> I fucking hate you. Why do you hate me again? All right. Well, anyway, I have grown a lot in this podcast. Thanks to you for challenging me in the beginning. I did fall victim to it, and I do want to apologize for everyone listening. I'm not proud of that first five, ten minutes. Um, but since then, I have grown. I, I've You can't grow in an hour. control over my emotions, and grow. I feel good about myself. You can grow as quickly as you let yourself. Yeah. Thank you, Confucius. Um, on that note, thank you so much for listening and for watching. And we'll see you next week.